Okay, welcome back. Uh, joining me on the set now is Eric Hackley, and Eric is involved in a lot of things. Uh, you may know him from uh, being a producer of his own Hackonomics here on Channel 10, but uh, Eric uh, is also doing some other things to try to uh, encourage the community to kind of sit up and take notice of some of the things that they can do for themselves, and we're going to talk a little bit about that. Eric, thanks for taking the time out of your busy schedule to come on and do the show. Uh, before we get into a lot of the things that you're working on, though, why don't you just give us a little background into yourself. Okay, I'm Eric Hackley. I graduated from Elmhurst High School, Indiana State University, and uh, I was a marketing major there, and I wound up in sales, and I moved to Detroit, took a job with Harvester. They folded, and I went to another company who soon after folded, and I wound up with Operation Breadbasket in Detroit, where I was a director in 80, mm -hmm. and uh, I started putting my attention towards the uh, more uh, social side of uh, of things. Okay. All right. Now I know we know uh, from from your program uh, economics that uh, part of what you're trying to do is to to help young kids uh, uh, better themselves, learn to develop themselves, and uh, through through television and doing interviewing and that kind of thing. Talk a little bit about that. What what that that the project or your programming is kind of about. Well, over the past eight years, I had a chance to put together basically a theory, and a theory that, that um, I could either prove or not prove. Mm -hmm. And uh, back then, the talk in the early 80s was that a person had to learn how to sell themselves mm -hmm. and know how to present themselves to get a job. Mm -hmm. So, um, okay, I'm a salesman by trade, and I've been doing that anyway. So uh, what I started doing was um, trying to figure out a way to get young people involved in learning how to present and sell themselves. When I moved back here to Fort Wayne and I found out about Channel 10 here, and I saw that this facility here would give a young person a chance to learn how to produce and present programs and present themselves and become better communicators, I started to take those ideas and try to uh, put together um, a format so that people can learn how to, you know, uh, do shows. Mm -hmm. By doing television shows, uh, well, the final part of the theory is if a young person learns how to do a television show, they're producing a show, uh, and they're interviewing their friends from their school, that will allow the parent of these kids to use their home VCR mm -hmm. and record their kid doing something. Mm -hmm. So now, at the end of three or four years, when the kid gets out of school, the parent would be able to accumulate a video resume of this kid, what he's been doing through the past you know, few years. Mm -hmm. And this kid, out of first out of high school, will have a video resume plus a written resume of what he's done. Mm -hmm. And that will enable the parent to aggressively market their kid, right. and that can eventually lessen the unemployment rate of the 18 to 21 year olds. Okay. That's, that's, that's an interesting theory. And, and some people might look at that and go, well, come on, market your kid. But in reality, it's like you say, uh, anymore with, with jobs being the way they are and whatever, uh, success does depend on how well you market yourself or are marketed. So I, I think that's important, and I, and I think that uh, uh, the kids that, that uh, participate with you in that program, I think, I, you know, it may take a while before we see the fruits of it, but I think they'll be better off uh, in, in the long run. Uh, now, I know there's some other things that you're, you're working with, and I know one thing that just finished up not too terribly long ago was the Get Out the Vote Parade. You've done parades in the past, mm -hmm. but you just finished up uh, the vote, uh, Get Out and Vote Parade. Talk, talk a little bit about that. Okay, that parade, the parade was very interesting. Uh, as always, you know, what we do is we pull together the community. We have the uh, different grocery stores like Scott's, you know, they're always involved, uh, Mr. Steve's Rentals, inner city businesses like Barnes Construction, Gaines Construction, uh, the military, the National Guard, uh, and the uh, recruiters, uh, educational recruiters. They all come out and put their cars and trucks and vans in the parade. And, and uh, what we do is, uh, you know, along with young people, different groups of them, mm -hmm. and we parade through town here from Lynx Wonderland around the inner city here, the same circle that uh, is that, um, the school system, you know, you can make that same circle and hit every high school in the city. Okay. Um, and um, we just come together, then at the conclusion of the parade, we have speakers. This past year, we had a black female mayor come to Fort Wayne to speak. Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Tolles, uh, Cheryl Scott, uh, Liz Dobinus. We had, a, we had six different speakers, Robert Love. Mm -hmm. And um, they all give a message to young people from different perspectives. Okay. And by giving a speech, you know, uh, to young people from different perspectives, that will totally, uh, 
it'll, it'll give them more of a well-rounded opinion. We had technical people, market-oriented people giving them uh, directions to go in, mm -hmm. and that's about the only way that you can get a kid on the right track is, uh, is um, you can't stand back and preach to him, but what you can do is have like a forum hitting him With different, different things. Yeah, uh -huh. right. Let, and let them pick out exactly what's, what's important to them or whatever. But, but more importantly than that, our MC for the program is a 16 or 17 year old from Wayne High School. Okay. So each time we do something like that, we always have uh, young people in very strategic positions mm -hmm. so that other young people watching can say, hey, I can do that. Okay. And then eventually they'll be doing their own thing and I can step back and go out here and sell my products. <laughs> Right. Now, that, that parade, though, again, was to get out the vote, and, and it, was, it was aimed at uh, trying to get people involved yeah. in the May, pri May prime primary. Exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, because, uh, you know, the, the candidates basically ignored uh, the, the blacks here in Fort Wayne anyway, mm -hmm. Fort Wayne for that matter. <laughs> uh, Vice President Bush came in town and waved at the airport and went out to Magnavox and shook my mom's hand. Okay. Uh, Jesse Jackson didn't come to Fort Wayne, Dukakis didn't come to Fort Wayne, and this Fort Wayne here is a very uh, significantly, significantly historic spot. I know we've talked about that. Yeah, talk, talk a little bit about some of the things that you've done as far as finding out about how significant Fort Wayne was in history. Well, just to, that's a real long story yeah, there. Know, just, just give me a little bit of it. Okay, uh, well, real quickly, um, at the time the uh, explorers were coming from Europe, the French, uh, the, well, the Portuguese, the English, they all know about this land right here because this land right here where Fort Wayne sits, whoever controlled this land here would have a virtual fur trade monopoly on this whole part of the country. And back during that time, um, uh, raccoon skins, um, all those different kind of, kinds of furs were just in high demand. We were just like Houston, Texas with oil, okay. except they were coming here. And um, that's the very base of our tradition, was a rich fur trading area. And it became an outpost eventually when the Americans found out how profitable it was going to be. Mm -hmm. But to tie that in with our next program, we have another parade coming up. Mm -hmm. And uh, this land here was once the land of the Miami Indians. Right. So I've been working right. real hard to make contact with the Miami Indians. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of people didn't, didn't even know that they were still in the area. Right. Right. So. Uh, I might be jumping ahead here a little bit, oh, go ahead. That's but we're going to be uh, inviting the Miami Indians out to participate in our next parade here coming yeah, up. And that next parade is? It's going to be June 18th. Uh, the parade is called Juneteenth. Okay. Now, a lot of people feel that I'm uh, misarticulating that word. Okay. It's called Juneteenth because uh, in a nutshell here, what happened was in uh, January 1st, 1863, when Abraham Lincoln announced the Eman Emancipation Proclamation, um, the slave owners didn't say, well, that's it. Yeah, right, exactly. You know? Exactly. So it took two and a half years for the word to get all the way around there, and it wound up, you know, finally in Texas, they're the last group mm -hmm. to be released, you know, from slavery right. because of a General Gordon Granger announced it in Texas and said, we're going to enforce it. So from that day on, uh, June uh, 19th, 1865, um, the blacks have celebrated it. Okay. It was the first black holiday. And what really upsets me is, okay, right now still in the South and Southwest, it's being celebrated. Okay, right. But as the blacks migrated this way, they don't celebrate, they know about it, but they don't celebrate it. Right. They didn't bring it with them. Right. And that, that's very upsetting mm -hmm. from a um, cultural perspective because the older ones above us, mm -hmm. uh, they always emphasize the importance of knowing your heritage, knowing your history, but yet they take a very important holiday like that and forget about it. Right. Right. So that's why we want to resurrect that holiday and make sure people know about it. Right. And, and so you've got a parade coming up, and, and you, again, you're going to get with the speakers and whatnot and get a lot of people involved in that, too. Yes, the objective here is, uh, of course, we'll have young people involved, but mm -hmm. this is going to be um, a cross-cultural, social, political, economic event. Mm -hmm. Cross-cultural in the sense that we're inviting the Hispanics, uh, the, uh, the boat people, uh, the blacks will be there, mm -hmm. and whites will be there. And uh, I'm working on a Civil War troop right now to be there, the Boy Scouts, etc. And um, then the businesses will be there with the semis like Scots was before. Yeah. Yeah. And um, uh, eventually we're trying to attract Evan Bayh and John Mutz to come and address the group because these guys are vying for the governorship. And being that the uh, leadership of the, of the nation here, we don't know who's going to be the next leader here in January, right. but we do know who the next governor is going to be. It's going to be one of two guys. Right. Right. So I think that it would be very smart to get them articulating facts to not only the black community and the Miami Indians, but just to everybody about what they plan on doing if they're in office and what they're going to do to make this a more of a homogenous 
society okay. because what we're going to have represented is a miniature America, okay. but America with the uh, Native Americans, the Indians involved. Oh, yeah. Yes. Okay. So, so in, in reality, you're going to take the opportunity to for the the Juneteenth celebration and and allow, uh, like you say, a cross cultural celebration, if you will, at, at least to, to to find out about. It. I think that that would be good. I would hope that. Uh, uh, Blacks would, uh, you know, learn about it. Like you say, there's probably a lot of them that that know about it, but they just they don't celebrate it. And maybe I think we talk too, maybe because it's so close to the Fourth of July, <laughs> they kind of go, well, that's you know, that's our Independence Day, but in reality, it's not. Well, that's a paradox right there because we get all excited about July Fourth, mm -hmm. and you should because you don't have to work that day. Right. I work that day, but most people don't work that day. And um, theoretically, it's possible that we could have July Fourth and celebrate it, you know, coming out of the fields right. at noon and celebrate it and go back in the fields tomorrow. Right. But uh, because of June 19th, you know, if, if one group is not free, nobody is free. Right. Uh, I mean, n nationally here. Right. We're not talking about South Africa. That's right. another story. Yeah, yeah we don't. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, we're, we're going to take the time and uh, celebrate that day because uh, if it wasn't for June 19th and then that type of a spirit, that was a rebirth, right. a new birth. Right. Go, and um, if, if it wasn't for that, I couldn't be a salesman, and you probably couldn't be doing what you're doing either. Yeah. And we fail to realize that, and the, the ones, our parents and above, they were negligent, to put it mildly, in that making sure that we know about that holiday right. and, uh, and, and customs. Okay, well, that's good. Well, I think you're doing a good thing. And again, tell us again, the parade, when is the parade going to be? Okay, the parade is going to be June 18th, Saturday at 5 o'clock p.m. Okay, starting at? At Lynx Cornerland. Okay. We chose 5 o'clock p.m. because there's going to be an uh, NAACP board conference here in Fort Wayne where people from all across the state are going to be here, and they're going to be in the parade. And this is an NAACP parade. I'm just working with them as a political okay. action coordinator. Okay, good. All right, well, I can say I hope that the people will turn out and uh, participate in this and that we can, can kind of keep the thing going. And I want to hope that you continue to, to enlighten the people. I think a lot of the things that you do, uh, again, are, it's, it's a basis for enlightenment, trying to let people know a little bit about their, about their heritage and, and also how to better themselves. And I think uh, that, that's the bottom line. We're all going to need to better ourselves if everything else is going to work out right. So uh, continue to uh, success. And uh, thanks for taking the time out. I know you're a busy man. Thanks for taking the time out to come on. All right. All right. Glad to be here. Okay. That's uh, going to do it for this edition of A New Generation. What we've done is given you a lot of information, uh, tried to show you some things that, you know, you, you can participate in. We don't have to sit back and just look. You can actually participate in. There's a lot of things going on. And uh, I would hope that uh, you would take advantage of that opportunity. So until we see you again uh, for A New Generation, I'm your host, Steve Miller. Thank you. Good night.